now welcome everybody back to the channel in today's video we are back on board the boeing dreamlifter let's just go ahead and quickly take it off here from this beautiful runway i bet this is gonna work very well they're so just giving full power here into this aeroplane and take off from this nice island here and stuff right let's do this very optimistic and everything let's go come on gain lift now Yes, everybody, we've crashed. Of course, that's because the 747 Dreamlifter is rather weak. We need more power in those four engines, don't we? Today, let's go ahead and find out a way to do that. Yes, how do we make the 747 more powerful? You know, there's pretty much only three solutions that come to mind here. For example, first of all, you could build bigger engines to the 747, like a GE90, like four GE90s. You know, this engine is rather large, pretty much as large as the 737 fuselage is. Something else we can maybe try is maybe like fitting some rocket engines to the 747 that could also be an idea i mean we all probably remember the north american x-15 the fastest plane ever to be and that was because it had a rocket engine indeed no but this is all just way too impractical how about we try experimenting around with afterburners this is actually a solution that might just be able to work in real life quite well right i mean how do afterburners work <clears throat> the idea behind an afterburner is to inject fuel directly into the exhaust stream and burn it using this remaining oxygen right basically an afterburner is just an additional combustion component that's just added to engines and i mean you can you can see right here pretty much this is the engine right here normal jet engine and, and then you have this afterburner which is all it basically does it spritz fuel into the whole thing and just make the thing stronger you know it heats up the air quite a lot making the thrust a lot more. I mean, after all, afterburners were the reason the Concorde could be flying at Mach 2. This plane actually did have afterburners on. Look at that. Yeah. You know, after all, afterburners are quite an easy way of making a plane twice as strong as it already is. And guess what? In the flight simulator, it's even easier to fit afterburners to the engines, right? All you basically do is you go into the engine specs right here. Here they are. And all you basically do is just enter in a thrust increase that the afterburner will create, right? For example, this is now the 747. I've made the engine twice as strong now with the afterburner activated. And the thing is, afterburners automatically always turn on once you're given enough throttle input, right? So, all right, let's just give this a little bit of a try. Let's go full power, revving up the engines slowly. Let's just see. Yes, everybody! We can already see some afterburner action. A lot of it, actually. Oh, my God. A very much lot of it. All right. Plane is now twice as strong. And, um... This has not been very well coordinated. You know what? I might have made those engines a little bit too strong now. So that, so that means just only slight variations between power inputs of these engines uh, will put this thing to, to sleep. All right, let's go full power now. Take off here carefully. Put the flaps out. Get everything ready here. Yes, planes are already rolling. Full power here with those afterburners. And we are, do I know, twice as fast already. This is finally looking promising. Oh. Yes, everybody, we have taken off. Yeah, you know, indeed, having engines that are twice as powerful means that you need only half the runway. So that's great to see. Everybody, welcome aboard our Dreamlifter. Now, let's just already see how fast can we get this plane just right now. We're already at half a Mach, which is, you know, half the speed of sound. You know, speed-wise, this plane actually compares pretty well now with the Concorde, honestly. Right, just before recording this video, I flew the Concorde in this flight simulator, so I kind of know. This is not actually unrealistically fast. This is really how fast we could get the 747 to fly if we were to build <clears throat> some afterburners into the engines. How about that? Let's maybe try to reach some more speeds here with this afterburner tech here. Yes, in fact, let me try to reach the speed of sound. Now, the question, of course, arises whether the 747 fuselage, and especially the Dreamlifter fuselage, would hold this kind of speed. We could try to um, turn on the damage model, which, you know, simulates the G model. Oh, we have already fallen apart. Yeah, but of course, I've tried modifying some other planes here as well. How about we check out the Mad Dog, everybody? The MD-80. The thing about the Mad Dog is, though... No one really ever complained about its performance. It's actually very well performing. But you know what? <clears throat> Maybe let's just see if some afterburners have a kick. Three, two, one, let's go. Full power into those engines. Mad Dog engines. And we can see, yes. Again, this would be quite easy to fit to a plane like this. Here we go. Let's take off. Yes. Finally, we're able to take off anywhere. This has gone very well. Now, as you can see, reducing the throttle by just a little bit, you know, also turns off the afterburner. And this is... <laughs> 
This is brilliant. Now, this is now a little bit faster. Oh. You can see that the red line speed once again. Yes, we've fallen apart properly. Good one. Yeah, you know, this might just be the reason why the Concorde needed some Delta wings and stuff like that. Let's get rid of the damage simulation here. Jesus Christ. All right, Mad Dog, I hope you'll forgive me. Let's go ahead and try to take off here again. Now with the <laughs> afterburners. We don't even need flaps here now. Uh, it's looking good. Oh, oh, come on. Yes. Now, seriously, now, can we hit the speed of sound, please? Just trying that out. Yeah, there we go. We're already at half a mock. <laughs> Look at that. We're, we're okay. This is now a little bit faster even than the Concorde. This is quite ridiculous. But we're not at one mock just yet. We're at 0. 0.7, really. Let's go ahead and maybe, you know, get a little bit higher on altitude. Here we go. Now, 60,000 feet. Planes will be able to fly here quite well still because of those afterburners. And especially here at the speed of sound. Yeah. All right. There we go. We have literally reached a mock. And the thing is, this plane was not even <laughs> made to display it. Look at that. Yes, we're now at zero. Okay, we're not moving at all. That's some interesting news for sure. You know, it does amaze me, though, how easy it would be to fit afterburners to a plane. I mean, let's maybe try it with a Cirrus jet. Now, I've just noted, I mean, the thing is, this plane is practically made out of plastic, right? And so putting an afterburner here wouldn't be too smart. That's great to see. Let's maybe go full power. Does this work here? Yes. Come on. Yes! And we are... Okay, maybe I added a little bit too much thrust here now. Jesus Christ. All right, this is already as fast as uh, when I, you know, built rocket engines onto a Cirrus jet, which actually I did try before. Yeah, maybe a little bit unrealistically much power that this plane has. The Cirrus jet is in real life very much underperforming, right? It's only got like a thousand pounds of thrust. And so putting an afterburner would be quite a good solution. And I mean, again, it would be possible. Maybe like a DIY project. Does anyone have like a few million dollars so we can purchase this jet? That good flight right here that we have right here. Let's try this now. Yes, that's a good crash. I mean, just checking one thing about the Cirrus here. Let's maybe see. Does the parachute still work here? Yes, pulling it. Yes. All right. All right, that puts out the engine. That's interesting now. All right. Perfectly safe plane, and it's fast as well. What is this video? All right, this might just be a little bit interesting. Welcome aboard the MD-11, everybody. Yeah, this is a brand new release. This is now a proper realistic add-on, but I've done some modifications, of course. Let's go full power on this airplane. Yes, let's see. Come on, will it show up? Yes! Good to see. Now, this is a little bit powerful, isn't it? I mean, just look how ridiculous this looks. But, you know, again, this could kind of work. Let's take off now. Full power now. Now, I've not added too much power to the afterburners right here with the MD-11, which does actually show right here. This plane is barely more powerful than the real one is. But here we go. This is perfect. I mean, I mean, it looks cool. That's kind of the point of it, isn't it? Is it in any way efficient? No. This thing just eats fuel. That's basically the whole point. This is great to see. So yeah, guys, welcome back to Inventing New Things with Mr. One. And thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Mike, Jacob, Tanner, Mubarak, Darren K, Oh Man the Human, Robbie, Tim, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Calvin, Kelly Chaos, Ryland, Moritz, Jackie Boy, New the York, Shadow, Noah, and Death Rider.